I'm Effie and this is What Effie Reads. Today I am going to be talking about 13 audiobooks that I really loved and highly recommend. Some of these audiobooks I listened to quite a while ago so please forgive me if I have to read the descriptions off my phone. So this list is in no particular order. The first book is In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. The story basically follows Nora after she receives an invitation to a Hindu for an old school friend who she hasn't spoken to in 10 years. Obviously she finds this really bizarre but a mutual friend is also invited so she decides why not and goes along and then things just go really really wrong. This is an audiobook that I found really suspenseful and just had me really intrigued throughout. So if you're a fan of thrillers this is a really good one. The second book is The Arrival of Someday by Jen Malone. This is an audiobook that I just absolutely adore. It follows a young girl with biliary atresia and it's something that she's lived with and managed for her whole life, aware that someday she would need a liver transplant and as you might be able to guess from the title, someday is now here. This was a really compelling story as she has a hard time sort of wrapping her head around the fact that for her whole life she's known that she's had this thing but knowing that one day she would need a liver transplant despite feeling fine up until that point was something that she just struggled to get to grips with. So there's a lot of fun, there's a lot of joy and you're just rooting for this character throughout. The third book that I absolutely adored was Nina Is Not Okay by Shappy Corsandi. This book follows a young girl who is an alcoholic and it has a sort of irreverence to it but it's generally following the character of Nina as she tries to get her life under control but also has to come to terms with the fact that some really horrible things have happened to her and being in denial isn't working anymore. The fourth one is probably one that you've heard a lot and it's Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a book that I have a really hard time comprehending how it would be anywhere near as good in physical form because it is absolutely fantastic as a full cast audiobook. It very much feels like you're listening to a podcast, a true crime podcast, and you're following Sadie as she tries to seek vengeance against the man that murdered her little sister. But you're also following some true crime investigators as they try to get to the bottom of what happened to Maddie and also Sadie because as this book opens Maddie's dead, Sadie's missing and you don't know until right at the end what truly happened and I, I just I was so gripped throughout and I'm so glad I picked it up and there's a reason why it's an audiobook that 
everyone recommends because it is just so good. The fifth book is probably a little bit of a strange one to have on this list and it is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. This is the fifth book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series although I believe it is technically number four as I think A Court of Frost and Starlight is 3.5 but I could be wrong. The A Court of Thorns and Roses series initially follows Feyre as she accidentally murders a fairy and is forced to move into the fairy kingdom as punishment for her crime. The series obviously has come a long way since that point but the, the story in A Court of Silver Flames is essentially a bit of a soft reset as we're no longer following Feyre, we're following, following her sister Nesta as she tries to recover from the things that have happened to her over the course of the previous books. It's a, it's a really compelling story about recovery and kind of it being okay to not be okay. The reason why I specifically put Silver Flames on this list is that the narrator is absolutely exceptional. So I'm actually fairly new to the Akatar world I read A Court of Thorns and Roses, I want to say towards the end of last year and then over the course of the end of January into the start of February prior to the release of A Court of Silver Flames, I read the rest of the series and then I read A Court of Silver Flames in 24 hours as soon as it, re it was released and I received it. And then I went back and listened to all five books as audiobooks and there are two different narrators previously. Unfortunately I couldn't tell you the way that the narrators are split but I did notice a difference between the first narrator and the second narrator but this third narrator that we have was by far the best narrator. The way that she narrates it is just so compelling and you can really empathise with Nesta. And it's the little things like when Nesta's in emotional turmoil, the pacing changes. So it will get really fast, really intense, punching you. Or it'll go slow and there'll be moments where her voice cracks at the sad moments. It is an exceptional audiobook. The sixth audiobook is No Win Race by Derek A. Bardowell. This is a non-fiction book discussing racism and sport. The reason that this audiobook is on my list is because I would never consider myself a sports fan. I very passively have a, a rough idea of what's happening in some sports, but I wouldn't really go out of my way to follow any sports. But the way that this book is constructed was really engaging, it was really fascinating and there was a, a really good mixture of anecdotes from the author as he recounts personal instances of racism but also more general stories about racism in sport and just the general inequity. It was a book that I didn't expect to 
love so much. I picked it up not long after NetGalley started doing audiobooks, so there wasn't much choice available. And as always, I do try and read diversely. At the point that I picked it up, I was focusing on picking up books by black authors uh, with an anti-racist slant. The seventh book on this list is When the Ground is Hard by Mala Nunn. Part of what makes this audiobook so good is the narrator. I absolutely love Barney Turpin. The way that she narrates books is absolutely exceptional. She's the reason that I picked up Wings of Ebony as an audiobook. It's it's one of those situations where as soon as I see her name associated with an audiobook, it's practically an autobuy, which is possibly a little bit strange because I may not know anything about the author, but it it's like a, a seal of approval. If I know Barney Turpin has narrated, I feel like it's going to be a good audiobook. This was the first audiobook that I had listened to that was narrated by Barney Turpin. And it started it all for me. Now I'm just going to look up the synopsis of this book because I don't think I can do it justice. First, I want to say that I am aware that the country mentioned is no longer known by this name, but off the top of my head, I'm not sure what it is called now. In this stunning and heart-rending tale set in a Swaziland boarding school, two girls of different castes bond over a shared copy of Jane Eyre. Adele Hubert loves being one of the popular girls at Keziah Christian Academy. She knows the upcoming semester at school is going to be great with her best friend Delia at her side. Then Delia dumps her for a new girl with more money and Adele is forced to share a room with Lottie, the school pariah, who doesn't pray and dis defies teacher's orders. But as they share a copy of Jane Eyre, Lottie's gruff exterior and honesty grow on Adele and Lottie learns to be a little sweeter. Together they take on bullies and protect each other from the vindictive and prejudiced teachers. Then a boy goes missing on campus and Adele and Lottie must rely on each other to solve the mystery and learn the true me meaning of friendship. It is just such a beautiful book. And the way that Adele and Lottie's friendship grows and the experience that, experiences that they share together, it just stays in my heart. And then I believe the final line is a local saying or proverb and it really stuck with me as well. The eighth book is another book that I didn't expect to love as much as I did and it is Space Hopper by Helen Fisher. This book follows a woman who lost her mother at a young age after she finds a way of seeing her mother again. I had previously read a short excerpt of this book, which basically starts with this woman saying, I'm a pastor's wife, and this is going to sound really crazy, but I found a way to see my mum again, not just visit her at a cemetery, but actually go and sit and have a cup of tea and biscuits with her. And then that's where the excerpt left off. So I didn't know what direction this book was going to go in. I thought it was going to be more of, and I, I hate this description of this genre, but I thought it was going to be more women's fiction. And in fact, it had a bit of an 
SFF feel to it. And it really surprised me kind of the whole way through. And I, I really don't know how to better describe it without giving away too much of the story. But I will say that the way that it deals with discussions of faith and grief are really well executed. And there were some really emotional moments as well. The ninth book on this list is Word Slut by Amanda Montel. This is a non-fiction book exploring linguistics and kind of looking at how sexist linguistics is. It is a really empowering book and the takeaway message is essentially do whatever you want with your language. Like, don't let people say that the way you speak is in any way incorrect. This is the way that patriarchy has decided language should work. And in fact, it goes against the way that people who aren't cis, white, straight men speak. And... It was really eye-opening and I have to say there were points that made me go oh yeah maybe this isn't the right way to approach language and I feel like it should be required reading for everyone it is just such an exceptional book in the UK it's not narrated by the author but I have been told that Montel actually narrates her own audiobook in the on the US version. So another great point towards it, as she is fantastic and has a lovely voice. The tenth book that I recommend is The Gloaming by Kirstie Logan. Again, this is a book that I am going to read the blurb from because I don't feel like I can do the story justice. Mara's island is one of stories and magic. She knows she'll eventually end her days atop the cliff, turned to stone and gazing out at the horizon like all the villagers that went before her, drawn by the other worldly call of the sea. Her whole family will be there too, even her brother B and her sister I Isla. That's really bad. I, I listened to the audiobook and can't remember how you pronounce her sister's name. The island and the sea do what they want and when they claim a price from her family, Mara's world changes forever. As the years pass and Mara grows into herself and her scars, a chance meeting with the magne magnetic pearl brings magic to life once more in ways that Mara never thought possible in a story that she never would have dreamed for herself before so this is a sapphic romance and it has a really it strikes a really interesting balance where you're not sure if it's fantastical or not like a lot of it feels like a large metaphor but at the same time it's not metaphorical what's happening on this island this is the kind of thing that I don't usually enjoy where the magic is very unclear whether it's real or not but there was something so enchanting about this book and I felt completely mesmerized by it and the cover is absolutely gorgeous so if you do dish, if you're not an audiobook person which to be honest if you reach this point in the video you probably are but if you're not the cover is absolutely gorgeous and why not pick it up in physical form 
and have it decorate your shelves. The 11th audiobook recommendation that I'll give you is The Voice in My Head by Dana, Dana L. Davis. This book follows a set of twins who are inseparable except that one of the twins has a terminal illness and has decided that she wishes to die with dignity. The other twin is desperate not to lose her sister and so reaches out for help at which point she starts hearing a voice in her head which tells her to go to this place and her sister will live. All through the story I knew where it was heading but it still didn't lessen the impact of that final reveal. And again this is a book that tackles grief in a really upfront way. I also absolutely loved the the vo voice of God character. Apart so the the book is narrated by the author however the voice of god is done by a second narrator and i feel like they characterize this voice absolutely perfectly there's a snarky sarcastic tone to the voice oh we're almost at the end the 12th recommendation I have for you is The Princess Diarist by Carrie Fisher. This is one of Fisher's memoirs and it was so funny and again it is voiced by the author. It's my favourite way to listen to memoirs is those that are voiced by the author. This is an audiobook that I listen to probably only about a month after Fisher had died. So just hearing her voice, like obviously she's a famous actress, so you can hear her voice anyway, but there's something about a memoir that feels a lot more intimate and the way that Fisher writes her memoirs are very like you're just talking to a friend. So, I kind of cried just because it just makes you miss her so much which is probably a little bit silly but it is what it is and the the 13th recommendation we finally reached the end of the list is On the Other Side by Carrie Hope Fletcher again I'm going to have to look up the blurb your soul is too heavy to pass through this door. Leave the weight of the world in the world from before. Evie Snow is 82 when she quietly passes away in her sleep, surrounded by her children and grandchildren. It's the way most people wish to leave the world, but when Evie reaches the door of her own private heaven, she finds she's become her 27-year-old self and the door won't open. Evie's soul must be light enough to pass through so she needs to get rid of whatever is making her soul heavy. For Evie, this means unburdening herself of the three secrets that have weighed her down for over 50 years, so she must find a way to reveal them before it's too late. As Evie begins the journey of a lifetime, she learns more about life and love than she ever thought possible, and somehow, some way, she may also find her way back to her long-lost love. This is probably a weird one to add to the list because I can't remember like anything substantial about this book other than I remember absolutely loving it and wanting to read more from Fletcher. I've yet to pick up another book from Fletcher. I have pre-ordered her latest book that comes out in August but it was just such an amazing book and obviously as an audiobook it was really well done 
I look back over my ratings and the way that I rate books has changed over the years but this was a book that I rated five stars at the time. So that is 13 audiobook recommendations from me. Please give this video a like if you liked it and comment down below um, any audio re audiobook recommendations you might have because I'm always on the lookout for really great audiobooks. And until next time, bye! Bonus audiobook recommendation. We have the Me Before You trilogy by Jojo Moyes. This is an absolutely fantastic trilogy of books. They go quite far from where you start with the characters to where you end with the characters, but absolutely adored them and kind of sad that there's only three and a half books and 3.5 can barely be counted as a book because it's a 10 minute long audio book but absolutely fantastic that really recommend please check them out if you haven't already